Ladies, gentlemen, welcome back. And today, we've got a video that a lot of people have requested. Uh, and it's an updated infantry tier list. Um, so now, obviously, we have Zweihanders, and they've had a little buff. I was going to do this earlier on, but then Zweihanders were a bit of a letdown, and I was, like, pretty sure they were going to get a buff. And they've had a little one now. I believe they've got another one on the way that I'm not sure how strong that's going to make them. But they're, they're, they're pretty decent now. I'm enjoying playing them. Um... So that's definitely a change of opinion than I had in my first video with them. They were just unplayable in my opinion. Um, but, you know, I can't just wait forever to do this. So just wherever we put the Zweihanders, take that with a pinch of salt because they might get a buff again that is going to send them to the moon or maybe just put them up one level. Don't know. Um, but we'll just get to it. Uh, the other thing I want to say is this is my opinion. You might have differing opinions, might be better with certain units, you might be different Different uh, weapons are better with other units, make it that unit much more viable. Um, I play majority dual blades, so yeah, my opinions might be slightly different. But in the general, there are definitely units we know that are going to be top tier, that you probably can guess them quite easily, because you see them every single game. Uh, but nonetheless, let's get into the list. Okay. So, we're going to start from the peasants that are obviously down here, and we're going to work our way all the way to the big boys that are here, the definitive Zweihanders. Um, so, we'll try and just get through the, the start of this as quickly as possible. Obviously, we have the Surf. The Surf is D. Again, a lot of these are going to be... are going to be... they're just meat shields. They're, they're, they're meat shields. But I might put one in C because one of these peasants in C because it's got value in the terms of a peasant, not in terms of this full, the full tier five to tier one. Um, so, yeah, next we have the pike. Uh, I think this is the peasant pike. I can't remember what they're called, pike militia. We'll put them there. They might. They could be a C, um, but... Uh, yeah, they, D, I think, I think we're just going to plant all of these in D, or I think they're scouts, I can't remember, can't remember what they're called, I haven't used those in so long, um, but, again, if you're going to take these guys, they, obviously, they don't have shields, so when they're pushing, they don't have that chance on blocking if someone's shooting at them, but what they do have is if someone tries to sally out, they have, um, uh, all pikes have, like, a swarm trait that basically reduce the speed of the cavalry by, like, 16%, I think it is, so, from a peasant point of view, that's quite good. So we probably could put it in C. Um, yeah, because I guess I guess it can stop the sallies out. Actually, no. No, it's D. It's D. It's a peasant. Woodcutters. Woodcutters are definitely are better than serfs. I'm going to put that woodcutters are um, just a slightly stronger. I think there's more headcount as well, potentially, depending on which way you go. They've got a charge. Um, marts. Marts are going C because they give, a obviously, a 10%... Um, hero and unit xp buff that is very nice uh and they also make the uh the towers they push um they make them uh like stronger they give them extra defenses uh these boys they're gonna go in d just a pointless tower shield doesn't really do much for you um for the cost uh the demise pikeman or the domain pikeman whatever they're going to go and see. They actually do have some as a as a grey unit. They can actually kill things. That is uh, that's nice. We'll actually put them at the head of C. Um, but they can actually kill things. Uh, here we now have the javelin militia. Now javelin militia. Obviously we got mastery in this as well. So that's that's going to bolster a lot of these things. Um, javelin militia used properly uh, is either an A or a B. Uh, we're going to probably put it in a B. It's, it's, uh, we're going to put an A, but it's probably going to be at the end of A, actually. Because it, it's got some serious, for a, for a green unit, and there's a few green units now, that we'll see in a second, that, uh, have this capability. That burst capability, and the fact that it's mastery charge, now throws the javelins, that their block break is just incredible. And you can, like, what's it, like, 30, 34 javelins, um... Or 60, no, sorry, 64 javelins in the matter of, like, three seconds. 
So you can really put out a hail of something. If you play them well, they're a very good green unit for a good price. Um, then we have the Domain Javelins, I believe these are called. I will I will muck up on some of these um, units that we don't use that often as names because they get lost in. But yeah, I know what these are. They've obviously had the mastery that when they throw and hit something, they regain their uh, Javelins. Like the Javelin Sergeants, but the Javelin Sergeants have to kill something to regain ammunition where these guys just have a hit them. And then they also have a 80% slow uh, on their thing. Sounds good, but the problem is that they don't really have any block break and all of that. It is nice that you continuously throw, but the damage is just slightly lackluster. Um, the 80% is quite nice on units uh, for making them, you know, slow and not move out of the way of your, your teammates coming in with other units. But it just doesn't have the punch that um, Javelin, uh, uh, Javelin Militia have. Um, yeah. Again, I'm going to muck up some of these names. Uh, the Rattan Pikes. The Rattan Pikes are A tier. Uh, we're going to have a video coming out of these very shortly. A few games. Just our traditional like mastery. Is it good? Sort of videos. Um, they're, they're insane. 80% damage reduction. I've actually put on the Rattan Doctrine as well. For the two extra poisons. So look, look out for the video. Because you're going to see if we can make that 100% damage reduction. Um, or yeah. Basically, poisons enemies, makes them not allowed to do any damage, turns them all into vegetables. It's great. The only issue is, if there is one musket around and he has liquid fire, he can just kill the entire stack in one thing. It's like having a bunch of archers because they're so flammable. Um, and then moving on, uh, we have Pike Militia. Pike Militia, we're going to probably put uh, in A tier. I haven't seen them in a while. I know their mastery is good. Um with a lot of cav out at the moment, I can see them in A tier. I can see them in A tier. Um, and by the way, when we're looking at these on A tier, this is not like matching them up. This is just so we've got like this is where the greys have gone, uh, and then this is like these are head of the head of the greens. Like just because I'm putting Pike Militia uh, in A tier doesn't mean that Pike Militia is going to win versus a T5 that I might put in A tier. Do you know what I mean? It's like. It's A tier for the greens. Um, don't want to like... Because otherwise you'd put everything down here and it would just be full up there. But for a green unit, these are like... Fantastic. Fantastic. And again, and then we're moving on to Iron Cap, Iron Cap Swordsman. Uh, we're going to pop those in A tier as well. They can catch so many people out. They've got a seriously nasty charge. Again, though, with all the greens, uh, any fire, they're dead. So scorpions muskets anything like that you're going to say good night to those uh and then we have the i think it's domain demi spearman i think uh those i i mean i know they've got mastery and they've got a they've got um they've got the thing where they stab and that's meant to do some damage but again there's just not that much damage and they they will just kind of melt. And that timing, when you press that stab, it's just quite a long time. So I'm going to put those in C. I just don't feel like there's much there's much room. It's similar to, like, this grey shield here. It's just... I, I don't think it's, it's that worth the price when you've got units for the same leadership that are up here. Um, moving on, I think these are called the Iron Cap Spear, Spearmen. These guys, Mastery again. Very good mastery. The only issue I've got with these guys uh, is that they um, they don't have like a long formation. They're just a, a square and a, and a round formation. That's kind of their downfall. But apart from that, they have an incredibly good mastery. The downside is they obviously can be burned, but their mastery does, um, does negate that slightly. But... Yeah, you're probably not going to take these compared to the other shields, but they're still, they are still very good. They're still very good, uh, and we're going off these all these units being full mastered, by the way. Um, yeah, so if you've got them full mastered, you'll know that they are pretty good. I mean, I'm not sure you would be bringing them out in a top tier siege anymore, but uh, maybe you had the spare leadership and you just needed a shield. If, helping your team but they are surprisingly good 
Um, then we have Prefecture Pikes. Uh, we're going to put Prefecture Pikes in B. Um, B because they're very good, and especially fully mastered, they obviously are very good. But it's sort of a one-time, one-time um, use, one one trick pony. You charge them in, you you get some kills, and then they get wiped. Uh, and the problem is, there's a lot of shields at the moment, a lot of shields. Uh, and uh, yeah, they'll just run into those. You'll hear the block animation, and then they'll get killed. If you can get a good charge off though, on the like on the top of a siege tower, down and you can kill a lot of heroes, then that is fantastic. Um, but, yeah. Um, squires, squires are going in C. Um, squires, in my opinion, are pointless. Their mastery is really bad. Uh, it just doesn't really work. Their charge doesn't hit enough to make it worth it. Just not not a good unit. Perfection, perfection um, guard. We're going to put perfection guard in A tier. Um, Perfection Guard are very good still or with uh, Perfection Drills. Again, a lot of these units came into their own when it was the blue tier, se uh, blue tier season, the blue lock. Um, so they kind of, you don't see them as much now, but Perfection Guards can still pick up a lot of kills. It's just if you run them into the S tier stuff, um, yeah, you're going to, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle, but they're still, they're still an incredibly good unit. Um, for the for the leadership, uh, halberdiers are going S tier. Halberdiers are probably the best, one of the best value blue units you can get. Um, they are, uh, yeah, so they can stop cav quite nicely. They can put out a lot of damage. The only downfall they have is that they're blue and they can burn. Um, but yeah, if you're gonna get a blue unit, there's only there's a few that I'd say to get, and um, yeah, halberdier is definitely one of them. Uh, Mace Sergeants. Mace Sergeants for the leadership, for 150 leadership, no uh, repairs needed. Um, crazy good. Crazy good. They're going to go in S tier 100%. Um, really like the Mace Sergeants. I have, you know, I basically always get their value worth whenever you're playing them. Um, walk up to, being that there's so many shields at the moment. It's, they're really useful for 150 leadership to have something that can crack through, you know, your Imperial spear guards and stuff. Um, yeah, it's nice. They're, they're very nice. Uh, moving on. Um, I forget what these guys are called, uh, but we don't use them that often. We're going to put those down in D. Um, it's the mercenary unit. I can't remember their name. I know they're javelin something. Is it Black Dragon Javelins, maybe? No, it's something something like that. But uh, I've used them a few times and never really picked them up again. Um, so if they're good, I'm sorry if I've put them in D, but I do not have enough experience with them. I think they're kind of meh compared to, from what I've seen, what I've used my Javelin Militia. Um, yeah. Um, right, moving on. Naginata Monks. Uh, Naginata Monks are going to be a tier, incredibly good at killing heroes, really cheap leadership, and um, yeah, super, super high damage, but kind of get wrecked by units, so basically you just use them to kill heroes. Um, good last point clearers, you know, if there's like, if everyone's used all their units and you've got a bit of the last minute, like last two minutes of fighting on uh, on the last point and only, everyone's only got peasants left or from both sides, if you have these and you bring them out and you've just saved them for this exact moment you bring them out, you will wipe all of the heroes very quickly. They are incredibly good at that. The only, well, the two issues are they're blue, so they burn, and they cost 2 million silver. So, too expensive. Um, Condottery Guards, I know I said that wrong. We're going to pop those in B tier. Uh, they're not bad. They Their, their shock attack is has had an upgrade it feels pretty good now but um yeah it's uh it's just i don't think they're good as good as perfection guard so they're going underneath as you can see perfection guard condottery and squires all in a, all in a nice line of where i think they should go um and then moving on the lanch necks the land sharks uh land sharks i think i think 
I'm going to put those in B with uh, Prefect Spikes. I actually think Prefect Spikes with Mastery are better than Land Sharks, but if you wanted, if you don't want to get Mastery with these guys, I think Land, Shark, Land Sharks are better than them without Mastery, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, very good again. Tower, one trick pony, charge them in, lots of damage. Um, but, yeah, let's go in there. Uh, Sons of Femria, we're going to go A tier with those bad boys. Uh, where are we going to put those in A tier? We're going to put those, actually, we're going to put these back here. Um, Sons of Femria, always good for running around the back uh, and uh, killing archers or bursting down heroes. Kind of unexpectedly ping them over, click beast mode, and then boom, everything gets killed. Um, there was a stage where they were absolutely ridiculous. Uh, they've been nerfed since then, but they're still they're still very good and very sneaky. You know, if you see someone with uh, with guns or archers hidden there, and you can manage to get these guys round to them, oh, you'll just wipe the stack. You'll get your value with these very good, very well. Um, but if you run them into some of the other units on the li on this list, they especially if they've got a shield, they won't stand up that well. Um, the cuddly monks uh cuddly monks are gonna go in b tier i know you can make these guys do good um but especially with their slow on their windmill strikes um but they're gonna go b they're still they're still usable and that's the thing with most of the stuff on this list by the way at this current point in time there is so many usable units because of mastery like there is a lot the game is actually in a very good spot for being able to use multiple units. Yes, there are some outliers that we'll see in a second on the top list, on the S tier, but as it stands, uh, there is a lot of very usable units. Um, that is really nice. Really, really nice. Um, right, moving on, we have bagpipes, and I love, I love my bagpipes. Uh, and now they're 90 leadership, they fit in to the warband so much better. You can actually find a spot, I would, I would actually, bef I kind of want these to be 80 leadership. I think, I know it's only 10 leadership less, but that would, it would fit in even better in my warband anyway. <laughs> it's what I have left after a, after a certain warband that I really quite like and I'd like to be able to shove these in. Um, so yeah, these are going to go B tier. Obviously I would put them, I would put them up higher, but they don't get used that often. They are very impactful if they're used prop properly. And so when you're using these, you want to be able to watch what's going on on the battlefield. And let's say someone's about to, a maul is about to do a knockdown on a big important unit that your your teammate has. What you want to do is as he's, as he's when he knocks them down, click surge, that's their big buff. And that will give them immunity to being knocked down. So they'll just get straight back up um, and or, or immune the knockdown. Um, so you can be really impactful like that. Uh, and especially I saw once uh, a guy using them and there was a short sword coming in to belly flop um, his Ford Abrasios and the guy clicked surge, avoided, it means the um, the 40s didn't get knocked over and then the cav charge that was on its way got killed by the 40s. Great play. Really, really good. Um, moving on, the alchemists. Uh, we're going to put the alchemists at the back of this the back of B. Actually, no, no, no. We're putting them in C. The alchemists can move to C. Um, alchemists are good. You can put them in the corner if you have the doctrine. Put them in the corner and just continue to click that button. That means they don't run around and get themselves killed. They just kind of have an aura off of them and heal. And that's good. And that's kind of the way that people use them for a little bit. But um, they are... Yeah, they they have fallen off because there is a second. There's a new healer in this group now that is um, that is slightly better, or slightly better, a lot better. So um, yeah, and the problem is when you actually want these guys to heal, they will just run around and they tend to run to the front and get themselves killed. So that's where we're going to put them. Um, see, yeah, see. Uh, I think these are called the demi demi cherry eye or something like that. Uh, I have I have used these a bit, but not not extensively like the other ones. Uh, the other ones in A tier. Um, I'm gonna pop these guys in C. The last time I used them, it's a nice idea, and they do have they do have hero killing capabilities. They do a lot of damage, but Fenrir exist, and Fenrir are faster. More bursty, more versatile, take less range damage. 
Um, so, yeah, they're just they're bad Fenrir, basically. Um, the Jang Just. The, now, this is another one that's going to fall down the list from last time we did this. Last time we did this, the Jang Just in the blue seas in the blue um, blue lock were incredible, absolutely incredible. And now they they fell off a little bit. I felt they fell off a little bit. So I'm putting them down in B. Um, they are good, but if soon, as soon as shields involved, their lack of ammunition, um, yeah, they just they they just fell off a little bit for me. They're still good though. Um, the shotgun pikes, uh, again, I'm going to put these in C. These these can be C or they can be A. To be honest, I've had so many experiences with people hitting me with these, and they'll just suddenly wipe my unit. Uh, this is talking blue lock. Out of blue lock, gone, uh, off the list. Um, but yeah, they again they've fallen off. They fell off massively. They they don't really have any formations that really help them, and uh, yeah, they're just kind of irrelevant. Um, the samurai, the samurai is going to be in C tier. I know they had a buff, but still, they see they're squishy. They're kind of a bit awkward to use. Um, so we're going to put those in C. Now we're getting into the tier fours. Tier fours, gentlemen. Um, the uh, the spear sar spear sergeants. Yes. Um, we are going to put these boys. We're going to put these in A. A or B. Uh, actually, you know what? We're going to put these at the head of B. Spear Sergeants, they've definitely come a long way, and I like them a lot. I even made a full mastery video on these. Um, they are very good. And I'm like kind of like reconsidering maybe putting them in A, but I think for the purposes of this, I think we're gonna put them in B. But don't, you know, don't let that discourage you from using them. Stuff in B is still is still good. And these are definitely head of B or end of A. Um, the full mastery with the heel, uh, is really really nice um they're tanky they just damage sponge you've got the uh the advance that with the mastery they do like three different like strikes they just kind of shank someone uh, so if you catch hero out with that you can basically insta kill them um really good roaming unit but i still think that the overall the imperial imperial spears are slightly better so yeah, ah, uh, yeah. You know what? Actually, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Sorry about this. We're gonna move these to the end of A. This is my list, my opinion. So, any comments about this? <laughs> as your opinion, this is mine. Um, they, uh, yes. So I'm gonna put those there in preparation for where the other one's gonna go. Uh, they're at the end of A though, that end. But yes, the roamability of them really, really nice. Uh, you're not going to get huge amounts of kills. You're not going to get a huge amount of kills. But you're going to soak a lot of damage. And you've just got to make sure you've got them on cover commander. And you're at the front line just like roaming back and forward. And just protecting different units at a time. Just standing in front of things. And they'll take the damage and just continue to heal. And then as soon as you see a hero out of place. Walk over or stun them or whatever. And then just advance them. And then put them back on cover commander. And it's super fun. Uh... We now are going to go for the Palace Guards, moving to the Palace Guards. Now, the Palace Guards are a weird one, and this is probably where I'm going to get one of these very wrong. Uh, I'm going to pop these in A tier. Uh, but lately, I've seen people playing them, and whew, I haven't picked them up for a long time, but lately I've seen people playing them, and they've been playing them so well, and they've been very strong. Um, but I'm hesitant, from my experience, to put them in S. They're going to just... I'm going to put them at top of A because I know if they're played properly with full mastery, that is, they can be incredibly, incredibly good. Um, so I, that could be S, but yeah. I've only really started seeing them start to slide back in. And um, yeah, they're looking good. They're looking very good. Uh, moving on, we have the Imperial Pike Guard. The Imp Pike. Now, can you guess where the Imp Pike's going? It's going straight to S. The Imp Pike era is back, gentlemen. It's back. It is. Uh, it's quite special, and uh, you see a lot of them. A lot of them. They're the, basically the the catalyst for every push, every sort of walking onto points. 
if you have these guys and it's they get used properly with full mastery oh it's so nice you walk and then you click your three button and they all go and just completely annihilate and the more kills they get the you get the reduced cooldown on the walk so you, if you're lucky and there's some peasants about and they kill a lot you just walk again and do it again um really really nice unit you'll see this everywhere it's a, become a staple because it's great against everything um really really good uh javelin uh javelin sergeants we're gonna go a tier um they are very good they were s tier when they got their mastery they've had a little nerf and i've been seeing a lot less of them they're still really 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 good and you'll st still see them in sieges but they were s tier last season um when they got the mastery but now i'm going to drop them down into a just because they um i think they've been kind of outshined by their their other brother um purely because obviously their capabilities are a lot of throwing and got nerfed a little bit in terms of damage but still good still good um uh halberdier sergeants i'm gonna put in s tier halberdier sergeants again similar to ear in pikes they are a jack of all trades the one thing i like about the um the uh halberdier sergeants one they're slightly more tanky than the hat blue halberd is uh but they you're they're jack of all trades so you a cav charge comes you're pretty okay you'll, you'll probably lose a bit of your unit but they'll kill they'll kill the cav a um infantry advance you have those down you have some mates around you some um some allies with their units they'll pick up loads of kills they'll really do do a lot for you they're, they're just a really solid unit for the price really really solid it's definitely a, a one to pick up definitely one to pick up uh <laughs> men at arms <laughs> s tier uh men at arms are definitely definitely s tier um i mean it's bet their nerf they had has definitely helped um they were way too strong before when i first tried these out just ridiculous too too strong uh but now they're they're people are getting used to it people are finding ways to kill them they're still very strong you know if you if you don't see the person with men at arms and you're like turned fighting someone else and they come around the back and just click cover commander your whole unit will be wiped in two seconds um but they're definitely it's definitely not as bad as they were when they were had at full power so yeah um they're s tier very s tier it's it's kind of the ease of use you just go near someone press cover commander and they will charge then you go over there you press cover commander they will charge it's the this the ease of use that makes them so powerful with the fact that you never need to take them to the supply point uh, and they're relatively tanky so yeah that's where those boys are going s tier uh now this is the big brother to the well it's the not the big brother it's the personal preference to the javelin sergeants the imperial jabs and i i love imperial jabs and i'm also going to put them in s tier um this one whatever your preference is just swap these two around but for me imperial jabs having that capability of throwing the shield pressing three throwing the shields and the amount of damage it does makes it so worth it and i that's why i kind of give them the edge on um on javelin sergeants also also the formation formation of javelin sergeants kind of irritates me i like the fact that imperial javs have that nice wall formation it's really really nice uh imperial spear guard uh they are going see this is where why i've put the um the spear sergeants up here because their older brother gets goes in s tier uh yeah imperial spears incredibly tanky their mastery is pretty good and um yeah if you're a heavy armor and you're roaming around with that you're basically yeah unkillable well not unkillable but you're very tanky you've got 27 percent uh, reduced damage on yourself and um yeah you're a frontline wrecker and basically you're a staple to any sort of big push really um tursarags tursarags whatever they're called irrelevant they're going to go in d um they're just they i'd love to see them get a buff 
because we need more sh units that can wreck shields. And just, they're not even a buff. I'll tell you what, these need a whole rework. They need a whole rework. Let's make them good so they can actually fight against the big shields that we've got. You know, I'm talking like men at arms, imperial, spear guard, spear sergeants, um, that sort of thing. Right, now into the hard, hard ones here. Four de Brachios. Four de Brachios. This is my personal opinion, but four de Brachios, I think, have fallen off a lot. I think they've fallen off a lot. TW, yes, still get used a lot for, obviously, being on the gates that their, their pikes go so far over. Uh, means that they can stay safe while keeping their pikes in the line of sight. That's great. And they still get used for that a lot. But I find in in the ranks that I've done and in sieges they get disrupted so easily that it's kind of negligible now um you try and set them up and they get disrupted people countered that back in the day with or back last season with spreading them out putting them in the one formation having them spread and then that got nerfed in terms of their pikes not turning very fast so yeah, they're going to go and be. I think they probably will make a return, and some people will have different, very different opinions with me on that. But um, yeah, I just kind of feel, I feel, and I felt the fall off. Um, as apps, as apps, uh, going in C, they can be used, but they're kind of yeah, they're not very good. They're just not very good. Again, another one like the Tus Rags, Tus whatever they're called, Mace Shield Boys. Um, they need a a little, a little boost. A little, a little buff. Stalwarts, Stalwarts are going in A tier. Stalwarts are actually made a good return. I'm seeing a lot more of them. Uh, and as long as you've got their front, you got their front to the enemy. They're pretty strong. Um, you know, bracing them, chucking them in, brace, avant, uh, chuck, go forward, brace, go forward, brace. It's quite good. Um, do you know what it's really good for? Is when you got the Imperial Pikes pushing up. You pull your uh, stalwarts up, and when the Imperial Pikes stop, you brace them down, and now you've claimed that land. And that's uh, that's really good. That's a really good combo with them, I would say. Um, that's how, how I've seen them being used, and actually it works really, really nicely. Uh, paladins. Paladins are going in C. People are going to be angry about me putting Paladins in C, but it's more of a, uh, a kind of... If someone sees this and go has influence that can go, oh, let's maybe make paladins bring paladins up because men at arms are, were the the downgrade of paladins and now paladins are just they suck, they suck. You try and do good with them and you can do if you're XVing them, but why would you spend that much effort in XVing when you could just take your men at arms and click cover commander and kill twice the amount? with using your hero without having to think about it um so yeah see some people might be offended by that but that's where they're going they're going and see uh berserkers berserkers are also going and see it's i personally think berserkers need i i don't really want them to get a like a damage or a defensive buff too much maybe a little defensive one but what i'd like to see with berserkers and a lot of these units and i have you know, I think some people agree with me on this, and especially with the ones coming up that we'll have a chat about. I think Berserkers need to have a bigger head count. I think, you know, what are they at the moment? Seven or eight Berserkers? I think we could do with taking them up to maybe 14 to 15 Berserkers in a, in a unit. Um, I think it's too little. And I think we've got to get away from these little units with little head counts. It just doesn't feel good. In it, obviously, for things like uh, Falconetti gunners and, you know, stuff like that, that's fine to have a little headcount. Flamethrowers, fine. Very specialist units. But ones that, like this, just get it to a 15-man unit. If we, t we actually wouldn't need to buff it at all, uh, any defenses or, or, or damage. Just up the headcount. Um, so I'd like to see that, personally. That'd be, that'd be quite cool. Um, the old men, the grey hair garrison. I used these on stream last night. They're actually not bad now. I wouldn't say they, they can stand up to a lot. I mean, they, they can take a lot of damage, but I think there's better units you can use. Um, but they are, they are a bit of fun. They are a bit of fun. So I think we're going to put those... We'll probably put those here. No, no, we'll put them in B. 
Mm, I don't know. This is a hard one. They've just been buffed. Uh, you know what? We'll give them the benefit that. Uh, no, we're not. We're not. We're going to put them in A. I'm going to go with my first option. Uh, put them in B. Sorry, um, because you just, you know, that this one could be wrong. This one definitely could be wrong. You know, they've only been buffed for a day. So potentially people will be like, oh, actually, I found a way to make these work really nicely. I did use them and they did do well. Um, but yeah, I we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to put them in a nice B. And, you know, as I said, a lot of these units are usable. All of B is very, very usable. Um, even C, if you want to use them, you can use them. They're all they're all usable. Uh, right. Uh, moving on to Axe Raiders. Axe Raiders are... They're good, but um, I'd probably I'm probably going to put them in B, but they're ahead of B. They probably could be at the end of A. Um, they are their their axe throw is good, but you you probably just be better to take jabs. To be honest, jab sergeants or imperial jabs. Um, their melee capabilities are okay, but now that imperial jabs have decent melee as well, like very decent melee, you know you weigh it up slightly and like ah. Eh, you know, these are a 30-man unit. These are an 18. So, yeah. It's one of those you've got to weigh up. But they're still good. They're, they're fun. I bring them out every now and then just have a bit of fun with. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Claymores. Claymores I'm going to put in A tier, but with a huge caveat. You have to know how to play Claymores and know the situations. You can use the Claymores. Um, their buffs for your team are so unexpectedly good that no one re it's it's not really realized uh when you're in a big mosh pit and you click for freedom and use these guys what you're giving to your team is really strong um and their aoe potential is really high the issue you have with them is if there's a maul or any sort of hero around that can do sort of stagger if he just continuously hits them they just won't get swings off they swing too slowly to uh if they're if they're being hit by heroes and getting staggered to actually get any damage off but if their hero is not paying attention and you send these boys in click for freedom uh put them over click for freedom then uh, plot uh click claymore strike oh everything dies and then follow that once the claymore strikes done with the with a direct charge into them while you're right on top of them yeah you'll do a lot you can do a lot but it's a very play badly they can go and they can go to bloody d tier but play them well, yeah, they're they're yeah they're very good. Um, Banner guard, Banner guard. Ah, oh, sad to see this, but Banner guard are gonna go. I'm gonna have to put them in uh, in C. Look, Banner guard have a lot of um, a lot of potential, like a lot of potential, but but they um, they're they're just so complex to use and things don't always work out how you want them to in terms of you're trying to go through the cycling through everything i've done a video on these of like most complicated units and these are number one by a long by a long shot they uh yeah they're just so complex to get right and as we know in battles things don't work out how you want them to you can be doing so getting them ready to go and someone can just charge you or come around the back or an assassin or um db and come and assassinate it's very when it goes right it goes good but does it go as well as something that's going to take half the effort uh for the same pro for the same cost you know i think these are more expensive than men at arms it, I, I know i'm comparing like paladins and and banner guard to men at arms but they're essentially almost the same thing except these guys give buffs around and reset um can reset charges if you play these banner guards as a utilities thing and not so much as something to just jump into combat i'm talking like you you're you're with a team and you're using your banner to reset let's say your team all have iron reapers to reset their charges on their iron reapers then yes these guys could be insanely good but as an actual unit on their on their own with face value it's just it's so complex that it's it's unlikely to get the optimum amount of them when for less you can you could do more that's why i'm putting them i that makes me feel bad because i actually really like banner guard and i like the idea i just think they need to be um simplified a bit so huskals um huskals are gonna go see same reason as banner guard um they're not complex but just allow me to, 
you could solve Huskals in a few seconds by okay two things the charge the when you do sorry when you're charging up chanting da, 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 da. that should not deplete you should chant and that should stay until you click charge then Huskals are now brilliant and Huskals will be going up to A to A or S tier uh, the next thing is with their once you've fully chanted their charge ability let me please for the love of god just aim it instead of having this silly ai that you click go and they go in multiple different directions it's it's silly no one likes it everyone hates that sort of thing where you just click a button and they choose where they go yeah you can kind of x them close but i've had so many situations where they've just torn off to some half them gone one way half gone the other way i want husk girls to be good because they look cool they look really cool it's such a waste of a unit but just the chant allow that to stay after you've chanted until you release them just have it fully chanted so you can actually wait for situations where you need it and then just allow me to aim the charge like charges should be um the marmalades the roman shields uh they are going into s tier these guys are very good at um smashing their charge is basically a shield smash um it's serious amounts of blunt damage and they seem to be whenever so when uh men at arms were at their most powerful uh these were the only unit that could that could actually beat them these guys are really good at beating units that are op that that get buffed too much or you know come out the gates a bit strong they're really really good at doing it so yep yeah, my marmalades are going in s tier very very nice uh monks uh same issue as the berserkers um i'm not going to put them in c though because monks have a bit more value they're going in b um the cuddly uh, not cuddly monks um the crescent monks crescent monks again i don't like small units i don't like units of i think it's a unit of seven i, I it's yeah it's kind of it's a bit irritating because you lose two and then you feel like well that's my unit done or relatively over and done with um yeah after the nerf i'm not i'm not too sad that they got nerfed there that spin just when you had a few mauls with these guys just was horrendous so they got nerfed and they're now usable but they're only in the right situation the issue you've got is you've got men at arms coming around the corner with their just random charge and these guys will be spinning someone walks around the corner with men at arms he kills three of them straight out of the gates and that's you know that's quite a good chunk of your damage gone so yeah monks are going to go there but they're still usable in certain situations mooshes mooshes are going a tier mooshes are just great problem is a lot of people think you uh, they're a frontline unit they're not they're a flanking unit you want to go around if you can get around the back of someone with them and uh hit your two button you'll do a lot of damage you'll probably kill their unit um the problem is you see i see them in skirmishes in actual frontline battles so much and people wonder why they instantly die um yeah they're not they're not built for that they're built for sneaking being going around the back a lot of units sneaking around you get around the back of uh let's say you've got their the stalwarts and they're braced up and you get around the back of them with mooshes you'll have them all dead within about two seconds so um but really nice still still good uh iron reapers iron reapers have had a huge comeback so my voice just cracked huge comeback um they're incredible really really good probably the best infantry unit at the moment um so yeah i can not, nothing bad to say about them uh maybe a bit slow they're a bit slow but they're tanky you can break shields you can kill squishy targets with the sword it's it's really good now they're an 18 stack of of reapers makes such a difference this is what i'm talking about with head count there's no need don't need to buff the damage you don't need to buff the the defenses just up the head count of some stuff you know these all these kind of tricky units um like uh like monks and berserkers stuff like that just buff the head counts um okay uh sealer does sealer does a lot of fun to play um but in comparison to reapers I could put them in A tier at the end of A, but I'm actually going to put them in at the head of B. Uh, the, it's hard for me because I really love Sealer Dars. They are great. 
Um, and they're a lot of fun, and you can do really well with them. You can do really well, and I've done really well. It's just in a proper situation, they they can fall off so quickly. But they are very good. They are very good. It's nice to be able to just click a button, and they do what you want them to do. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, Sealer does. I could put them in A tier, and they that's why I would say they're either A or B. Um, but like end of A, head of B. Um, but yeah, very nice. I like Cedar Dars, very usable, but um, they lack they lack that just certain thing. Um, I think if you have the combat doctrine and you put that in them, that might help them a lot. Uh, Shield Maidens, Shield Maidens. Uh, I don't know if I want to put Shield Maidens in S tier. Uh, not in S tier, in A tier. You know what? We're gonna put we're gonna put them at the end of A tier. Uh, shield maidens, obviously, they are good, but why would you take shield maidens when you've got basically a shield maiden replacement for half the value? Um, I've tested men at arms versus shield maidens, shield maidens with full doctrines and everything, and they are going for like, yeah, they're we're having like maybe 17 men at arms left to killing a whole stack of shield maidens, so. The value of shield maidens have been kind of... Um, but they're still good. They can still kill a lot. They've got fast attacks, shield walls, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. So, did you want actually... No, sorry. I'm moving. I've just reset. I'm putting them down in B. I'm putting them with the sealer does. I think they're at the same level. They're fun to play. They do, they do what they want. Uh, but they have a fundamental issue that they can just suddenly get wiped. Um, yeah. Um, that probably controversial. People are going to not like that one because I know people love their shield maidens. But it, the fact is, men at arms do the same thing as them and beat them very easily. So there it is. There it is. Um, Medal. Medal. We're going A tier. Medal. Great. Um, very good. They're good at stopping cav. Can be a little bit weak against infantry, but that's understandable. Um, yeah. Just. A tier, very solid, but not quite S tier in my opinion. Um, they got obviously changed their doctrines and now polearm doctrines. That's definitely helped them out. But I'm still going to put them in A tier because they can be a bit of a struggle sometimes. Um, the VGs, VGs are going in C tier. Uh, these guys need some real help. Um, they can be good again with all these units played properly they can be very good but in in a lot of the situations you have to take da damage to do damage and in the current way that it works if you take damage your unit will basically be dead by the time you uh, you have a full um, full bar on that so yeah they're going C I'm sorry to anyone that likes those uh, and now for the tier 5 javs um, the regenerii or whatever, however you say it. I know I got pulled up. I got pulled up for that um, last time when I made a video on it. Uh, these guys, again, head count. They need they need to go up the head count. Leave them the same damage, same thingy. Take them up the head count. They're currently twelve head count. They should be fifteen, sixteen, or even eighteen. Um, I think fifteen would be fine. Sixteen. I think 18 would be cool, but I think you probably need to lower some of their damages on their melee abilities if they were 18. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's any reason that they that they need to be 12 unit count. It should be more. Um, so, but these guys are going B. Usable, very fun to play, but again, in situations um, they can get they can get done quite quite quickly. And I still play them. I still play a lot of these B tiers. I play because why not? Have fun. It's a game. It's a game. Um, but yeah, they're going, they're going in here just because that's the way I want, that's the way I, I see them. Um, assassins, assassins, uh, we are going to put those in B as well. Uh, hmm, yeah, uh, assassins, they are very good at getting around the back and killing infantry, but then there's a lot of things. No, they're going in B, they're going in B, again. Same as same as um, same as the T5 Javs and a lot of the other units we talk about. Head count ten, they should be fifteen. Um, head count, it's too small. Uh, it's like I've <clears throat> the amount of times I've run mine to try and get somewhere, 
and someone's just wandering with men at arms on cover commander and my assassins happen to just walk past a wall that the men at arms are at men at arms come around the corner and go and just kill half my stack five of them gone that's half my unit and it's over it's yeah it's uh, when it goes well with them it's really good and they're super fun to play super fun to play but yeah they're the issue the issue for me is that there's their head counts too small uh orichi i think orichi is still i'm gonna still put orichi up here orichi are great they have so much potential uh one-shotting heroes uh, moving that front line up, anti-cav, they're basically, the if you time it right, they're the best anti-cav in the game, if you time it to perfection, obviously it takes skill, but I like I like the mix of skill and ease with these guys, you can be kind of high skill cap with them, but you can also use them quite easily, um, so I'm going to put them in S, I, I enjoy those a lot, enjoy them a lot, and then, finally, we get to the Zweihanders, the big boys, with their swords, now, if this was post buff, uh, if they sorry, if this was pre buff, they'd be down at, at uh, in D. I hated them, but now after bust, after the buff, I am gonna probably put them in B. In B, they are very usable and they're a lot of fun. They are so much fun, um, but. Uh, yeah, they they still lack a little bit of tankiness. Actually, you know what? No, we can put them. I'm going to put them in in uh, A because if you do use them right, they actually are they are solid um, and more. They can they can get involved in the fight, um, but and I'm also kind of <laughs> I'm kind of securing myself that they're going to get a buff. That, well, I know they're about to get a buff again, another buff. So as long as they're, as long as someone sees this in the future and they're not in B and they're in A, at least they're close to S because they're most likely going to become the best unit in the game. Let's be honest. Um, the way the way that um, they like to buff things in this game, they could be they could be way way up the list um, shortly. So we'll put them in, we'll put them in A. Um, that's when you're playing them very well. But they're they're a lot of fun. Um, I'm really I am enjoying playing them. It can be frustrating when you, you know, you just suddenly get they just suddenly die for no reason. But yeah, they're gonna go in A. In fact, we'll just pull them up here so it's easier to to look. Yeah. So that is looking like our list, gentlemen. That is our list. I think I'm happy with everything. There's a few things I might move around, and I know there's a few things that people in the comments are gonna get annoyed with. I already know. I'm just. I'm ready for it. Uh, but saying that, this is my opinion, this list. Um, so, yeah, if you, if you, there's a few things you will move around, make your own list. This is my list. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this sort of content, I'd really appreciate the sub. Take care, and I will see you in the next one.